Hello Ender Sword here again, this time with a video on these little green numbers that appear everywhere. They're on officers, they're on researchers, they're on ships, they're on any type of upgrades, buildings, whatever. Um, so I wanted to examine what the actual impact of these things really is in your gameplay compared to what they actually look like. Um, you would get the impression that some things would give you 120% extra resources, 85% extra mitigation, 135% extra hull, but of course they actually don't in reality because they are combined with the other stats that you have in the game and are actually diluted by those other things. So I wanted to take a look at some of the more popular things and really look at what the actual impact is on your game so that you can make decisions when doing upgrades, when looking for officers, deciding what ships to use, and especially if you're going to buy any of the primes, you should be aware of what the actual upgrade is going to be compared to what they say it is going to be, and then use that to make your decision on whether or not that is worth it, uh, whether you're paying real money or you're paying in-game resources to determine how to allocate uh, that sort of thing. So the first one we are going to look at is the Von Attendi. That is an officer that is often highly sought. It's an epic officer that has a below deck ability that improves your hull health by a certain percentage. Mine is currently uh, tier four, so is improving it by 135%. Um, and we're going to take a look at what the actual impact is. This is an officer that's often highly recommended by a lot of people uh, that is one to really, really go after. So what's the impact going to be? So I took a Rialta. So I guess for, for starters, I should premise I'm level 57. And this is highly dependent on what your ops level is, what your research is, the status of your ships and so on. And I'll show on a couple different ships so that you can get a sense of what that difference actually is. But I just went for a low one to begin with. We're going to go with this nice, snazzy, skinned up Rialta without any boosting officers on it at all. Um, so I maxed the stats, but none of the officers have anything to boost the hull health itself other than maxing out the stats on the ship. It has 186,520 health. When I add Devon Attendi below, which should be an additional 135% to hull health, it rises to 191,350. So what the actual increase there is out of the 135% is 2.59%. So it means for every 1% that the hull health says it will increase, it has actually only increased by 0.019%. The 135 actually equated to almost 2.6% in actual increase. Uh, this does vary depending on the ship that you're on. So the next one I looked at was putting it on a Pelham, which I have completely upgraded. Um, it is completely maxed out. The hull health here without her is 72,830,000, and then with her is 74,500,000. Certainly a nice boost of about a million and a half. The gain is 2.29%. The reason that it's less, despite the fact that all my research is the same and everything else is the same, is the Rialta caps at tier 4. The Pelham goes all the way up to tier 12, and mine is maxed out. When you upgrade tiers on your ship, you're upgrading the armor, you're increasing the health of that ship. The way that those numbers work is they work off the base hull health of a ship. So it will take the base number and increase it by that 135%. The more that you then build onto that ship means extra that it has, and the more research that you do is also extra that it has. And the hull health coming from Tendi or any other research is only ever going to affect the base of that ship. So the percentage gain that you're gonna get on a tier one, tier two, tier three ship is gonna be higher percentage than if you were at tier nine, tier 12 on that same ship. Uh, so that's why it is a little bit less here. So in this case, 135% health is going to lead to 2.29% uh, uh, and a 1% increase is going to give me 0.0169. You can then use that number. You can basically test this on your own. 
to if you have an officer like Tendi that increases the hull health, just leave her off, check what your hull health is. Always take it out of dock so that you know that it's locked in and nothing else is affecting it. Take it out of dock, look at the hull health, dock it, put her on, take it out of dock again and look at what that percentage increase is and divide it by the percentage increase that she is supposed to be doing and you can get this number. Once you have that number, you can basically look at um, what the comparison is going to be when you are looking to buy any other research, prime, upgrade an officer or whatever. So for instance, if I want it to take Tendi up a level and that's gonna cost me you know, 300 or 300,000 transporter patterns to do or whatever it is, uh, then I know what I'm going to get for it for making that effort and spending that resource. And particularly if I'm buying, uh, you know, with real life money, I'd like to know what I'm going to get for that uh, in exchange for what I'm spending. So we're going to take a look at a similar officer. Rutherford increases the shield health by 90%. In this case, the Rialta, 208,680. We add on him and his plus 90%, and we're up to 212, 570. The gain is 1.86%, and it means every percentage of hull, or I said of hull health here, I mean of shield health. So every percent of shield health I get is equal to 0.021% gain in the actual uh, shield health that I experience. And we'll do the same again for the Pillum. Uh, here you start off with a little less shields, 52,630,000. We add that 90%, now up to 53,470,000. Uh, the gain here is 1.59%. You're going to find that shields varies a lot depending on the type of ship that you're using. Interceptors, uh, actually tend to have a lower shield ratio compared to their hull. It may be a higher ratio when you're on something like an Explorer, uh, which has more shield, uh, you know, value to it. But then again, on something like an Enterprise, where your shield is going to regenerate anyway if you're using it with morale, then maybe you don't care as much because a 1% increase is actually only a is negligible because your shield ever runs out anyway. So you got to consider the situation you're in, but either way you can get uh, this number out, which is for every 1% of hull health or shield health that I'm going to get, it is 0.0177% that I'm going to be gaining. And the value of that is you can then look at your researches, look at especially really big ones like primes and say, what am I actually getting out of it? So if someone was going to buy the prime hull citadel, uh, research here, which obviously you see I have not, uh, to give you a hint at the value that I think it has, which is not much. For $100, you could buy this thing, and it says, oh, this will increase your hull health by 500%. That sounds like a lot. When you actually then run it through, what would I get from it? What is my incremental gain on the hull health? Here, it's only going to equate out to 8.4%. Still significant, but is that worth $100 to you? That's obviously up to you to decide. I've decided, no, that is obviously not. Um, you know, there's lots of these, so it would certainly add up. But for each one they add into the game, it's going to dilute this more and more and more. So if there are additional things coming up that are going to add 2,000% 200, uh, 2, to your hull health, which some of like the Borg tech, I think, does get up as high as that, um, then again, it's going to dilute this more and more so that several months down the road, you having this prime or not is going to make 5% difference, 4% difference, 3% difference every time they add that on. Uh, there's a similar uh, prime, I think multiple of basically these two things for shield health that are usually 400%. The 400% shield health is going to be worth uh, 7%. Again, on my account, it's going to be different on yours. You're gonna, if you're higher level than me, it'll be a lower number. If you're lower level than me, it'll probably be a higher number. You can find out what your own incremental gain is by basically just looking at your hull health before something, adding Tendi on, or completing a research or something, looking at the differential, and then dividing it by the percentage you're supposed to get compared to what you actually got uh, from it. So basically, if you're trying to make that decision, this is a good metric to do it on. Uh, when it comes to faction, 
again, similar thing here. They display everything as having a percentage increase. What is important to know is that the percentage increases are all additive. They basically just add on to what your previously existing total is. So at my level of research, if I have no officers on the ship at all, and I go kill something that is supposed to give me 9,760, it's actually gonna give me 60,463. That is basically a 620% multiplier. So that's coming from any research that I've done, and I've got no officer that increases uh, faction on the ships uh, whatsoever there. If I then load it up with the best possible crew that I can do at the moment, which for me is Enterprise E Picard with data for Synergy, that's gonna give you 100%. 5 of 11 at mine is at tier 4 that's going to give me 80 percent doctor is going to give me additional 20 and alonzo freeman is going to give me an additional 20. again these last three are based on the tier uh, of your officer at the time but basically in total this should give me an additional 220 percent the actual gain that i get now is 81,935. Uh, which gives me a 840% multiplier. So it's simply taken the 220 and added it to the original 620. So it doesn't give me 220% more. It gives me like 30% more or 35% more, I think uh, is about what this is. So it's adding it on to what your previously existing multipliers are. This also works with ship bonuses. So uh, for instance, the Pillum comes with something that says it drops additional loot. Anything that says it drops additional loot also impacts your uh, reputation gain, even though it doesn't say that explicitly, it does increase it. So my Pillum, which is maxed out, gives me an additional 120%. If I went out and used this crew on a Pillum, it would bump this number to 960. If I used an additional XO that's supposed to be an extra 100%, it would take me to 1060. So it just adds on to that number. Um, as you go, it's not actually a multiplier. And that's the big thing with a lot of this stuff is the descriptions and the way it says it of this will give you an additional 100%, you would say, oh, that doubles it then. No, it doesn't. It, gives you 100% of the base of the thing. So when you've got multiple bonuses, they're all based on this base value. If you don't have Picard and you add, don't have Picard with data together for 100% and you add them on, it would simply increase the actual number by the base number. It would give you 100% additional of that base uh, number onto it. Mining is done in a similar way. Again, a lot of people focus on the officers and they like getting, you know, mining's annoying for a lot of people. Some people love it. I think those people are crazy. Uh, but basically mining officers are something a lot of people seek out. And I've even seen them use like that fifth year anniversary one to get like a new mining officer or upgrade theirs or something like that. They give you a very low return actually on what your ship research does, what your ship tier is, and uh, what the specialty of that ship actually is compared to what they seem to say they are. So if I take this Bachor out, which is again max, and it comes with a ship ability of 500% increased mining rate of crystal, tearing up that ship is going to increase that stat. If I have no officers on and I go to mine three star crystal, I'm going to be mining at 219,400 an hour. If I add a 90% crystal crew to it, so uh, adding Barat and, and wingmen is going to give him a 90% um, to his captain's ability, it's only going to bump it out to 228 uh, and 500. Basically an increase of 4% or 4.2%. And for every percent that it actually says he's gonna gain, you only actually gain 0.046%. So even though again, it looks like, you know, plus 90%, plus 135%, plus whatever it is, is gonna increase your mining time drastically. In reality, it's only gonna increase it four or five, six percent uh, depending on what your ship and level and, and everything is. Uh, so I think officers for these things tend to be a little bit overblown. They help, and certainly if you have them available, go ahead and use them. But 
if you have a choice between something that's going to help you in PvP combat, uh, PvE combat, Hermatus, versus getting a mining officer, I don't think you're going to notice the mining officers all that much uh, a lot of the time. Um, now when we come to defensive stats, we get a pretty similar thing. And this is where in defense and penetration stuff, there are two different types of officers that can make a really, really big difference. So there are the original below deck, lower decks officers guys, like Boimler and Badgie, um, that give you an increase to your armor, shield deflection and dodge, all your mitigation stats by a set percentage. That percentage, again, is the base of the ship. So if I start off with a shield deflection on this Enterprise of 481,000, and I add Boimler on, who should be increasing it by 85%, he, in fact, only increases it to 494,000. That's because most of the actual other stats, of course, come from your research, come from your upgrades to the ships and so on. And this is obviously a maxed out enterprise. So the actual gain out of this 85 is only 2.69%. So for every 1% he says, it's actually 0.032% that you gain from it. If you compare him to someone who sounds similar but is actually quite different, Tom Paris, Tom Paris at the start of combat increases your armor shield deflection and dodge by 300%, but not of your base, of your defense, of the defense of the officers on the ship. So now instead of taking it off the base model of the Enterprise, it's instead taking it off your crew. So you can adjust it by increasing the amount of defense that you have uh, on your bridge and in your below decks. So in this case, because he works only at the start of combat, you can't actually put him in and then check the stats and see that he has this increase. Uh, but by comparison, whereas Boimler only went from 481 to 494 uh if you put if i put tom paris on load up my guys with defense then it's basically going to push it from 400,000 to well over a million 1.2 million almost um and that's just by taking the total defensive stats that i have and then multiplying them by 300 percent and adding that on you won't actually be able to dis see that displayed anywhere uh, on the ship because it doesn't take effect until it's in combat. So there is some, you know, fuzziness to that of what it's actually doing and how much it's actually adding to it. You can kind of back out those numbers, but uh, but that's the way that it, it seems to work. Um, so basically the gain is obviously a lot higher and for every 1% that he says he's gonna gain, this varies a lot by what the defense is of your officers. If your officers are a lot lower, it's basically gonna be a percentage of that. So if you've got a lot of people at like tier five, really high defense available, it's gonna increase it by that. So it's a variable instead of being a fixed amount. The better way to compare this is to actually put these things in combat and see what the difference actually is. So if I took this Enterprise out to level 51, five-star Romulan space, and I attacked a level 51 um, survey ship, I did it with completely useless bridge officers, so they did nothing, and then just Tom Paris uh, below on deck uh, for that one, or Boimler on deck for that one. So first I went with no officers, the mitigation that I had was at 59.19%. We added on Boimler with his plus 85% uh, to my defense, and he only increased my mitigation by 0.03% of the total. Is that worth it? Probably not if you've got a better officer that you could slot in. If you have no one really worth putting there and your stats are already maxed out, is he literally better than nothing? I guess so, but barely is he better than nothing. Whereas if we go with Tom Paris there instead, and he takes 300% of my defense instead, he actually gets me to the 71.2%, which is the maximum for mitigation. So if you want to compare uh, what the officers do with or without, then test this out and see what your mitigation difference is 
when you're fighting various things to determine which ones you want to use. But largely any officer that says a flat percentage, this increases it by 85% means by definition 85% of base. If it says, however, 300% of defense, 200% of attack, something like that, it is now adding it to, uh, it, it's taking the stat that you have, multiplying that stat and adding it to the ship. Also, what I've heard this described as is actually adding it to the pre uh, amplified number. So for instance, part of the reason that six of 11 is so good in Armadas and same with Torres is so good in Armadas, she gives 200% of the attack that you have uh, below deck or whatever your percentage is, depending on the tier. Uh, but she gives a percentage based on the attack below. When that is added, when it is a percentage of attack, that is added on before other multipliers are added on from research. Whereas if it says a flat number and it is not based on a statistic, then it is simply added on. And that is done after or independent from other bonuses that you get uh, from research and so on. So it's simply additive. Whereas if you get something that has plus attack, um, or plus penetration dependent on your attack that is added and then other things are based on that new increased value and that's why it works so well and has such a big difference uh, to the penetration values that you actually have so they're quite different in how they function uh, on damage we again have a similar thing we've got beckett mariner who is supposed to add 140 percent to your weapon uh, damage on the ship what does the 140% equate to? In this case, it generally is a little bit better than the hull health and the shield health uh, comparison, simply because there are slightly less uh, weapons damage increases that exist in the game, uh, or they are target dependent uh, a little bit more. So if my damage per round before was 26.65 million, I add her 140% to it, I'm at 28.14 million. That's a gain of 5.6%, which is actually not too bad. That's reasonably beefy, but compared to what she's supposed to be giving or what it would say on paper, the 140%, she's only giving 0.04% uh, for every 1% that you, it actually says. A caveat to this as well, it's harder to measure these because damage is a little bit random. So this is the stat that it says on the ship, but every time you fire, there is a large variation in terms of the damage that you actually do. So you would have to hit the same thing for a while, test it without her, then test it again with her and look at the total damage that you did uh, in each shot to really compare uh, what it actually is. But in addition to that, there are researches that are plus damage versus armadas, plus damage versus Klingons, plus damage versus players, things like that, which are going to further dilute this. So while it looks like she's gaining 5.6% when you look at the stats on your ship, when you go to actually fight an armada, if you have an additional bunch of researches that say add 50% against armadas, add 100% against armadas, add 80% against Klingon armadas, stuff like that, this will also be diluted by that number and you're not going to get that full 5.6% uh, uh, to it. So largely what you want to look at is how much is this thing already upgraded? And then consider that this is simply being added on to that amount. So if you look at my original uh, hull health number, for instance, on the Pillum, if I back out what the gain actually is, I was supposed to get 135%, but I actually got uh, whatever it was, 0.0169%, I think it was. If you back that out and do the math, then you can say the reason that it's giving me so little is because if I add up all the parts on the Pelham, all the research that I have, all of the other things in play, buildings that I have that increase hull health, whatever it is, then apparently I already have 5,200% bonus to my hull health. So when I'm adding 135% to it, I'm not increasing it by 135%. I'm increasing 
that 5,200% to 5,335%. So I'm only incrementally increasing it by a little bit uh, compared to what you would think. And I think when you do that, it comes out to about the same math, which is like a 2% increase to what you're actually getting. So I see this come up a lot and I see a lot of people often research stuff and be kind of disappointed in what they actually get from it uh, at the end of the day. And so I went and did some of this. It's going to vary, obviously, depending on your level. The lower level you are, the more impactful things are. The lower, lower tier your ship is, the more impactful it's going to be. The higher you are, the more diluted it's going to be. But I just don't want anyone to go out and, especially for like the real money stuff, to be making a purchase expecting, hey, this is going to multiply my hell health by five. It's not, it's gonna, it's barely gonna make a dent compared to what you think it is. So figure out what this number is before you make any of those big purchases or before you say tear up an office or decide to go after something thinking that it's gonna have a benefit when it doesn't. Also, when you're making the decisions of which officers to put in below decks, things like that, to comparatively weigh them off to say, hey, am I better off with Badgy that's going to increase my uh, penetration a tiny little bit or Boimler that's going to increase my defense a tiny little bit? Or would I be better off having uh, Mariner who's going to give me 5% more to my damage? and maybe then I'll kill things faster, whatever it is, um, so that you can trade those off. It also applies to those, I know people at the time, uh, a lot of people figured out they sucked, but the Borg Assimilate officers, other than Dezok himself that actually cast the Assimilate, the things where the Borg Queen is increasing 300% of the penetration and the other guy increasing like 200% of the defense per round cumulatively for the fight, etc. It sounds like big numbers. In reality, does virtually nothing. They're really, really shit officers um, because it's 300% of base. It's 200% of base. If they had set her to be like 300% of attack and she was a below deck officer, that would be absolutely amazing. But in reality, they suck because it is off the base uh, damage there. So just wanted to uh, make that clear to anyone that doesn't, uh, yeah, didn't know or whatever. And uh, thanks for watching. And I hope that helps some people out.